Good afternoon. My name is Sven Huber. For the next 18 minutes, I invite you to imagine with me the school for the future, a school that really prepares our students for the 21st century. I'm not a teacher, but I went to school and I have been taught, as have all of us. The guy in the middle, that's me, on my first school day, looking still a little bit scared, I guess. Today, I have two kids at school, 11 and 12 years old, and they bring their experiences and their frustrations about schools to our dinner table. Ten years ago, I decided to dedicate my life to entrepreneurship and innovation in education. Personally, I made learning every day one of my life goals. And professionally, my passion is to help kids learn better. Who of you watches black and white silent movies? Who buys a paper newspaper to find out the news? Who uses a landline telephone to make calls? I guess if you and I were in 1920s right now, we would all be nodding our heads yes. But guess what? Today is April 29th, 2021. Over the last 100 years, technology has really changed our lives dramatically. We've invented factories, mass production, cars, planes during the second industrial revolution around 1900. In the middle of last century, during the third industrial revolution, we created computers, started to digitize our world and went to the moon. Today, in the age of industry 4.0, we rely on the internet and 24-7 connectivity. On average, we have more than 80 apps in our mobile phone. Very soon, if not already today, IoT, AI, AR and VR form part of our lives, both at work and at home. If you doubt this at all, just check out the Replica app and meet your new AI friend to get a glance into the future. Imagine a month, a week, or just 24 hours without all the technology that surrounds us. No mobile phone, no laptop, no Google to access all information created by humankind. No social media, no video calls to connect with people in every corner of the world. No Netflix, no Audible, no Spotify, no Kindle to entertain us or to learn. Compare Tesla's self-driving electric car with Ford's Model T, introduced to the world just 100 years earlier. Imagine a hospital room in 1920. Nobody from the 1920s would recognize a hospital room today. Now, think about a classroom in 1920. And 50 years later, when I went to school in the 70s and today. What comes to your mind? At the core, classroom and schools look much the same as they did 100 years ago, when education was based on standardization when the main objective of school was to prepare boys to work in factories and girls to raise their kids at home. In 1920, a classroom had a teacher, 30 or 40 students and a blackboard. Today, a teacher, 30 students and a blackboard. In 1920, learning was mainly teacher-led and instructional. Today, mainly teacher-led and instructional. In 1920, kids had to learn a lot of content just to pass a standardized test and then forget most of it. Today, ask your kids. You get the idea. Think about it. Over the last hundred years, technology has changed almost all aspects of our lives very profoundly, but our education systems and our schools 
have not kept up with this change. True or false? I know you're thinking I'm being antagonistic, maybe too challenging, maybe unfair. Because out there, there are many teachers who are getting up every morning to make a real difference to the life of their students. And they do. You might be one of them. I also believe that everybody working in education wants the very best for their students. We all want them to learn as much as possible to access a better future. But equally true is that we cannot prepare today's students who will leave school in 2030 for the world they will be living in by pushing them through an education system that looks much the same as it did 100 years ago. It just won't work. It's not good enough. And if we needed yet another reason, we learned very painfully during the COVID-19 pandemic that our education systems worldwide are not prepared for the 21st century. We are not seizing technology the same way in education as we do it in all other aspects of our lives. While COVID is not the cause for the challenge in education, I believe it's our lifetime opportunity. As Albert Einstein said, in the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity. We might not have all the answers yet, but what if we start a conversation about the future by asking the right questions? Over the last 10 years working in education and through conversations with hundreds of teachers, I concluded that we need to question today's education system and today's schools on five levels. I call it the SMART model. Skills, methods, assessment, rooms, and teachers. Smart schools prepare our kids for the future, not the past. Let's have a closer look at the smart school model. Skills. What if schools help their students to build their purpose in life while teaching a curriculum for the future? Who cares about what you know when Google knows everything? Soon, when machines and AI have taken over most of today's jobs, knowledge will still be necessary, but not sufficient. The question then will be what our kids can do with their knowledge to solve problems creatively. Knowledge will still matter, but skills will matter more. Imagine the creative and entrepreneurial power we could unleash in our children when schools focused on teaching those skills we all know will make the difference in the future. Communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and above all, creativity and empathy. In those skills, humans will be always better than machines. But we can't teach them as a general ability if at the same time we keep teaching shallow knowledge in all subjects and measure learning by the amount of memorized facts. According to Professor Key Soria of University of North Carolina, the best way to teach creativity is to teach creative knowledge in all subjects. The same holds for the other skills. Motivation is another critical ingredient for meaningful learning. As Stephen Kotler, best-selling author and performance expert, describes in his book The Art of Impossible, motivation is the sum of drive, grit and goals. And the most potent intrinsic drivers are curiosity, passion, purpose, autonomy and mastery. Imagine a school that stimulates the students' curiosity helping them to discover their passions and leading them to build their purpose in life. Giving them sufficient autonomy to reach true mastery in all they do. On top of skills, we stack the second layer, methods. What if learning in schools were effective 
and fun. Kids learn profoundly by applying what they learn. As brain coach Jim Quick points out in his book Limitless, knowledge by itself is not power, it's potential power. It only becomes power when we apply it. Imagine a school that is 100% learning by doing. No textbooks, no memorizing of facts without a context, but learning with a focus on real world problem, promoting learning across the disciplines and giving a lot of freedom and autonomy. Imagine a school where children immerse themselves in project-based learning, where peer learning is the norm, not the exception. Because when children teach each other, they get to learn it twice. Imagine a school where learning is a journey to discover answers to why, where how might we problems lead to authentic learning adventures. A school where learning is really fun. This brings us to the third level, assessment. Talking about fun, assessment. What if schools taught for mastery, not for grades? Even students who do well in exams often don't understand the material in today's schools. And the skills we need to teach in the future can't be measured by standardized tests. Imagine a school without exams. Continuous feedback from teachers, peers, and I.I. make exams at the end of the quarter unnecessary. Short feedback loops allow students to identify in real-time learning gaps, and technology proposes personalized learning paths to close those gaps. Imagine a school where a high level of personalized learning takes place. Each student reaches mastery at their own rhythm. Each student moves on to the next level of knowledge only after having reached mastery on the previous level. This way, each student always works on the challenge skill sweet spot, the place where motivation and learning are optimal. Just a few percentage points above the current level, stretching enough to provoke learning, but not frustrating. This is how we ensure daily progress and deep understanding. Imagine a school where failure is not seen as something to be avoided, but as a learning opportunity. This brings us to the fourth level, rooms. Over the last months, we have learned one thing. We can work outside the office, and learn outside the classroom, thanks to technology. Imagine a school that is not defined by its buildings, but as a service of limitless learning. A school that provides physical learning and maker spaces, virtual learning environments, and spaces created by augmented reality. Imagine a school where learning groups are not defined by your age, or where you live, a school where children learn with and from students with similar curiosities and interests and learning levels. Imagine a school with unlimited learning opportunities. Students are not limited to the courses of their local school or the knowledge of their local teachers, but can access classes from schools worldwide. If we really want to bring smart schools to life, we also have to rethink the role and the training of our teachers, the fifth and last level of the SMART model. What if teachers learned in school as much as their students? Imagine a school education system where teachers learn from each other, both locally but also globally. Think about the learning potential if teachers could zoom into class of different teachers in different countries just to get inspired to learn and to share and to give feedback. Imagine a school where teachers are not seen as the all-knowing professors, but as true coaches and mentors, inspiring their students to find their purpose in life. Once students understand why they learn what they learn, mastery is unavoidable. We need smart schools, 
schools that adapt to a fast-changing environment. We need a paradigm shift to educate our students for the future, not just a little bit more project work or teaching of coding or creativity. We need to teach our students to learn to learn. In fact, I believe that learning to learn will be the ultimate skill of the future, in a way the killer app of smart schools. You might not agree to all the details in my vision, and that's okay. Therefore, we should not worry about the specific answers, but about asking the right questions. Of course, change will be hard and complicated, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. And it might be expensive, but the COI, the cost of inaction, the cost of not doing anything, will be much higher. Technology allows us to create a better, a more personalized, a more inclusive education for all. But technology will not be sufficient. We also have to empower the human aspect of teachers as true mentors. Let's not wait until somebody else does the first step. I'm convinced the only way to change today's education system is from within. Lesson by lesson, one classroom after another, school after school. Let's do it. Let's start rethinking schools. Teachers, let's be smart. Let's apply the knowledge to turn it into power to do what has to be done. Here's my challenge for you. Share and discuss the what-if questions of the smart model. Discuss them as how might we statements. Look for what's possible, not the barriers. Start with small, simple steps. Start today. Students, here's what I want you to do. Talk to your teachers about your future, about what you want to learn. Be more ambitious and more demanding with your teachers. The future is bright and it's yours. Don't let school limit your opportunities. We as parents, we should talk with our children more about the future. I propose you do the following three things. First, speak with your kids about the things they are curious about. Second, support their passions. And third, celebrate their failures as unique learning opportunities. Learning will follow, no doubt. Thank you very much.